In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Abba, Father, we thank you. We praise you and we glorify you. We thank you for this time that you've brought us together, Lord, to listen and to hear your word and take on board what you are teaching us, teaching us to be more and more like Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are teaching us how to live our lives according to your word. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us, you are in us, and you are guiding us every step of the way. And even though your word is so vast and so overwhelming at times, and that we sometimes we may or may not um, grasp it that easily, but Lord, we know that you are teaching us slowly and surely and every word that comes from your mouth, Lord, enters into our hearts and builds up and grows inside of us, Lord, this, this rivers of living water that comes out of, from us, Lord through your word deep inside our hearts. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for giving your life for us on the cross. Save us from the pit of hell. Save us from every destruction that the enemy tries to bring against us. We thank you, Jesus for guiding us and leading us to you, to the Father. Yes, Lord. No one um, can come to the Father except through you, Jesus. And you are the word. Your word is you yourself, Jesus. So we thank you for bringing us together to listen to your word, to spend time with you, and to have that encounter with you, Jesus, in our everyday walk life in whatever we do whatever wherever we go thank you for being with us thank you jesus we make this prayer through jesus christ our lord and lord we also thank you for brother vincent who's um, your vessel ready to be used for your glory <clears throat> thank you jesus for anointing him to share your word with us and for us, for whoever is here, Lord, and whoever will join later and listen later, that our, the eyes of our understanding will be open and we will um, accept this truth and be fastened <clears throat> and bound tightly in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. We make prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you, Sister Moira. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So, my dear sisters, you know, we have been studying, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, based on my memory, we have been studying about the Holy Spirit, correct? Yes, yes. John 6, 6, John chapter 6, verse 63. John, John chapter 6, verse 63. Okay, let's go there. It is a spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profited nothing. John chapter 6, verse 63. Yeah. Was, I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So, in John chapter 6, verse 63, we see Jesus saying, it is the spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, you know, my dear sisters, if you, if you really go and see, you know, each one of us, including myself, when we begin our day, at the beginning of our day, to the end of our day, have we ever taken an audit of the words we have spoken? No. Has anybody done that? 
say for example say you, you okay now it's already probably the middle of the day or some of you in australia you already probably go 4:30 but say for example you say tomorrow saturday i'm going to be conscious of the words that i'm going to speak i'm really going to make a deliberate and a conscious effort for the words that i'm going to speak why because jesus is saying the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life is that right yes and who do we have on the inside holy spirit holy if you have the holy spirit then the words that i'm speaking must also be inspired by the holy spirit yes see many a times we we open our mouths the lord said believers shall shall do miracles in my name they shall cast out demons they will speak in new tongues they will lay hands on the sick they will drink any deadly thing if you go and see all these things that jesus is saying about what will happen to believers you must use your words whether you are praying in tongues whether you are casting out demons you can't just be standing in front of a person who is demon possessed and and just say you can't do that you have to open your mouth correct yes if you are to drink anything you have to still open your mouth you will That's say right. oh, it's nice it's sweet it's bitter whatever but you are still going to open your mouth yeah don't you speak in tongues you're going to open your mouth that means my mouth of the words that i speak determine whether i am influenced by the holy spirit or i am influenced by the flesh or worse still i am inspired by the devil mm. are you are you are you are you with me my dear sisters Yes, yes. Brother. The words that I'm speaking is an indication of what I am having on the inside, because the my words will finally decide what's in my heart. Jesus said, "The words that I speak will determine what's in my heart." But every time, but you know, I'll give you, I'll give you a secret right now. I'll give you a secret. How many of you has ever counselled somebody? Sister Angeli, have you ever counselled somebody? Uh, many, 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 many. I'll, I'll come to that. I'll come. To that. What about Sister Moira? Yes, brother. Yes. Okay, I, I you're counsel somebody. I mean, I what about Sister? Yes, Sister Moira. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not like a counselor, but you know, just as a friend, as yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying you still have counsel somebody as a friend or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Very yes. praise God. Praise God, Sister Caroline. Ah yes, brother. You know that ninety-year-old friend of mine, that lovely lady, brother, who is not talking to her son. We I tried and tried, but he said the, no, in, no, in, no. For a tea and a coffee in the supermarket. Yes, the brother. Mall. She says no, no, no. That's all she tells right, me, brother. Right, right, right. So you and I'm too scared to say anything more, brother, because of her age. What if you know? Right, you know what right, I mean. right, right, right. Now, now, my dear sisters, I want to ask you one thing. You know, I'm going to give you a secret. if you want to be an effective counselor listen to this what i'm going to tell you if you want to be an effective counselor who can give somebody godly advice and even let them come out of their situation what is the first thing that you need to do yes us need to be rooted in the word and we have to practice what we preach No, no, no. That's fine. Now, 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 I'm talking about specifically in terms of counseling somebody. The very fact that you're going to counsel somebody is you can only counsel. You can only give to somebody what you have. You okay. cannot okay. counsel somebody. You know, I, I know a lot of counselors who will never counsel anybody with the word of God. They tell them, you know what? You please go for a morning walk. You come and do yoga. Avoid eating those red meats. Please go, you know, and have good sleep. Are these godly counselors or are these people who are just giving you some some advice? Uh, the worldly advice. Worldly advice. They will all give you advice with the flesh, how to sleep well, how not to you know have cholesterol in your body. But if you are really a god, ah, that's what I should have put a question to you is: We need to be godly counselors. I believe that we are all given godly counsel to people, right? Yes. yes. Always give godly counsel 
because we have received that word because you know a counselor can either destroy a soul or can win that soul for the lord that's why it is very important to be a godly counselor now whenever you are going to counsel somebody again this is the lord going to teach us maybe you know god i don't know why this top topic the lord is giving i i just you know you said john 63 and the holy spirit is just telling me about counselors now if you and i need to be a effective godly counselor what is the first thing that i need to do i need we need to know we need to know what we are going to counsel others we need to know the word of god ourselves before we no, can speak that is all fine sister moira that's all fine i know the word of god i have everything with me i have the spirit of god within as far as i am concerned no problem but what is the first thing that i need to do when i'm going to counsel somebody you have to change ourselves change our thinking change we ourselves need speak, no. No, no. we need to speak to the holy spirit brother because he is the one who is going to speak through us so no 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 what is the first thing that i need to do i need to let the other person talk and yeah. listen to them because what they are going to speak is mm. going to come from within and that will give me the indication of the problem which is inside yes brother okay are you listening yes see i, yes. I, I asked this question in context with the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life if you are going to counsel somebody that person already has the holy spirit that person only is a godly person what counsel can you give that person that person already has this he has got the solution but because that person has come to you for counseling is because that person has a problem on the inside the problem is not on the outside let me tell you you know my husband is like this my wife is like this my children are like this my boss is like this yes they are going to tell you the problem on the outside but as they are speaking and you are listening the holy spirit will help you identify the problem within amen are you understanding in order to be an effective counselor see the flesh profits nothing the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life so when you're counseling somebody listen to that person first yeah before we we are always in a hurry by the wounds of jesus i hear oh you do this say the scripture don't do that you know if 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 anyone goes to a doctor he goes to a doctor okay do you think the doctor will say okay uh, you having fever okay take this pen and go will he say that if he's a good doctor he'll say okay how many days you have been having the fever are you having any body pain then he'll check you he will find out that the fever is related to a, to a viral fever or to an infection or maybe he gives some panadol but probably he'll say it this doesn't look just like a fever how many days you have been having what sort of pain you are having in your body you probably you know use this stethoscope or you do run some test so that he will be able to identify the problem and then he will give a prescription right yes so will he first give a prescription say take this prescription and you'll be okay will he do that without even checking the patient no 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 in the same way when i am going to do counseling and when i want to help somebody i really want to you know bring them to the lord i really want to be a solution to their problem the first thing that i need to do is listen listen to them to talk and listen to it in such a way don't you know many a times i i i am like while counseling people they have been not telling me about their problem they tell about everybody else that everybody else is a problem Have you ever heard somebody? They say, "My husband is like this. My children, my in-laws are like that. My my parents were like that. The the weather is like that." Do you know that everybody is not a problem? They are the problem. Yeah. Can everybody yes. be a problem and they can't be the problem? <laughs> <laughs> see, the moment I begin to say that everybody is a problem and I'm not the problem, then everybody has to change. I'm going to have to change. Can you ever think that that person will ever be changed, or can you ever help that person? never so no, the moment God. that person is not going to be understanding mm -hmm. that they have to change now what is the problem 
sometimes it is unforgiveness. When you keep blaming everybody, you've got so many deep wounds. Probably at your childhood, there have been rejections, there have been so much of shame, there have been so much things that you have kept on the inside and the word of God has not been made known to you. That person is going to just keep it on the inside. And as they open out their mouth, as the counselor's job is to ask the right question through the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that that person will now start, you know, taking out all what is inside, what is the problem, help you to identify the root of the problem. Once you identify the problem, now can you give the right gospel to the person? Can you yeah. give them the right scripture? Can you pray for them? And can you tell them what to do? Yes. Yeah. Because Jesus is saying in John 6, 63, he's saying, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Once you understand who you're counseling, what their root problem is, now you can speak to them the truth. Truth, the word. And the word that you speak to them in the spirit, it will bring God kind of life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Are you listening? Yes, brother. So remember, my dear sisters, you know, every time when you and I open our mouth, as I said, you know, we were talking about counselors because now we went to trying to help other people. But if we really take an audit in a day, maybe you can try one day. You know, you probably you are not going to go to work or, you know, you're going to have an off day. Just say, let me go on a personal retreat. I'm going to check out what words am I speaking. Sometimes I'm tempted to open my mouth and lose my tool or, you know, some, some negative thoughts are coming. Bring those thoughts by opening your mouth to the word of God. Find them. You know, I'll give you an example. Sometimes you think that the preachers who preach only, they are all godly people. They are all very nice people. Whenever they preach on the pulpit, they are so convincing that, you know, they can never go in, and, and in the flesh. Do you think so? No, not at all. No. I'll tell you my own backing. Okay. About uh, one month ago, I hired somebody. I mean, I, I got somebody to my house to do some work. The guy started the work for four or five days and left the job half done. And he says he'll come after two, three days and did not show up at all. Did not show up at all. The house was in a mess. The door was open. In fact, Melanie was trying to work in the kitchen. The door opened and it hurt her. And she got a little bit of a cut on the hand. So I called up this guy. I said, when are you going to work? Then I was supposed to do something on the roof. He had already taken the money. And he says, he's going to buy the materials. He's going to come back. He just disappeared. And I called him. He said he was going to come. Then he never came. Then I kept calling. He refused to even take up my call. In the end, waiting for 15 days, just before I could go on my mission to Mumbai and Pune, I was really mad. I was really mad because now the house is in a mess. The things have to be done. I picked up the phone and I sent him a voice message. You know, I said to him in Hindi, I translated in English. If you don't come, the consequences will be very bad for you. <laughs> so please, I'm repeating, the consequences will be very bad for you. Okay. He did not see the message also. Another one week passed. After okay. one week, he calls me and he says to me, I'm coming tomorrow. Apparently, he had not heard, uh, heard that message of mine. So he said he's coming. And I was to go in about three, four days time to, to Mumbai on the retreat. He did not show up. I waited for him. And apparently, after he said he was coming, he must have heard, read that message. So he went into fear. Hmm. He went into fear because he said, if this man is going to take action against me, then you know, he got into fear. And I went to my mission, came back. Still, this guy never called, did not show up. Two days passed. And day before yesterday was the first day when I came back. I still saw this place still messed up, all the wood there, this, this, this. And the Holy Spirit reminded me. And he said, pray for the guy. So I was taking my morning walk. And I only said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon this guy. He's a, he's a Hindu chap, Anil. God himself has anointed him, filled him with his love and set him free. Now, earlier my flesh was what? My flesh said it's going to be serious consequences. And I'm not aware that he's gone through the serious consequences. He's afraid of what I'd send the message because he had all, after that he called me and said he's coming. Hmm. So I'm praying that scripture while I'm walking. I'm praying for him. 
I'm blessing him. I'm seeing, you know, that, you know, everything is going to go fine. Again, yesterday, while I was going for a walk, I again thought about him. And I said, I'm not going to let my flesh come into the picture. Although I'd sent that message. And I prayed that scripture. I, afternoon, I told Melanie, my wife, to call him because he doesn't know her number. And he picked up, and he picked up the phone. And she said, I'm Vincent's wife. You're supposed to come here. So he says, you know, you know, madam, I want to come. But I'm so afraid because boss has said that he's going to have serious consequences for me. He's going to take me into task. I'm so afraid. I'm really in hiding right now. Not hiding, but I don't feel, I don't want to face it because I don't know what he's going to do to me. So she said to him, no, 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 no. He's not going to do anything to you. You please come. So he said that he's going to come tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning is going to come. Now, mm. I want to ask you, my dear sisters, I share the word. I preach the gospel. Can I not go in the flesh? Yes, brother. Yes, because yes, brother. Because you see, uh, we are some many a times we are governed by our five senses in different situations, circumstances. Correct. Now we cannot we cannot foresee the circumstance. Correct. But when we are in that circumstance. You know, that's why uh, even in you many, many, many a times you come, you, you get so irritated, somebody coming and ringing the doorbell when you want to rest in the afternoon, somebody bursting crackers just when you want to go and rest last okay. week. And then somebody comes and says selling something when you don't want it and you get irritated because you're getting out of your bed and you have to go and answer the door. Oh, right. we miss all that here, Angelic. Here it's very quiet. We miss it, Angelic. <laughs> no one comes and knocks in the door. Mr. Caroline so, will send all those from Bangalore and from Goa to Perth now. I don't mind, brother. I miss the Baker boy. I miss the Butter boy. <laughs> you know, what Mr. Best. Angelic is just sharing is so true. You know, different situations, different circumstances, different people. You know, now, for example, like the example that I gave you, the guy was supposed to finish the job, come after two days or three days, did not show up for two weeks. Now I'm going to go on the mission trip. I want all the job to be done because the house is in a mess. Now, because I'm under the pressure of going on the mission trip, I give him that, those, those, those two, three uh, sentences I said, you'll face the consequences of that. I want to see you. If you don't show up in 24 hours, the consequences will be bad. And again, I want to repeat, I said, the consequences will be severe with a real stern tone, okay? 24 hours later, he calls up. I thought that, you know, because of the call that I made or because of the message that I had sent, he, he had basically called me. But I realized that he had not heard that message. He called me to say he was coming the next day. But after he spoke to me, he went and heard the audio message of the previous. Now he went into fear. Now he was scared of the consequences. And we went on mission for 10 days. Mm -hmm. Already two, three days passed. We came back. Now 15 days, he never showed up. Now in my mind, there is so much of, you know, what could be the reason he said he's coming. And now he's not coming. The job is half done. He's taken the money. And I said, now, instead of calling him and, you know, giving him another dose, let me get into the spirit. Let me start speaking the word. Let me not allow my flesh to take over. Yes, I was under pressure before I could go. I changed from the, from the, from the flesh into the spirit realm. Began to speak the word. 24 hours later, the Lord gave me wisdom not to call him myself, but to ask Melanie to call. And he told us the problem why he was not coming. And when she said to him, don't worry, he was angry. But no problem, you can come and finish the job and he's coming tomorrow. Now, you know, my dear sisters, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is just like I, just like I, I share the word. We take an audit. You know, I also learn through my different life experiences. Just because you are a preacher, just because you go to the pulpit, just because you share the word, and just because God works miracles through you, there are signs and wonders happening doesn't mean that we have already reached perfection in our souls. We are all in struggling and journeying from that same journey of trying to perfect ourselves in our soul, in our mind, and in on the external to that way we can conform to Christ. And so, when you begin to see that at the beginning of the day, now see this experience 
has really, you know, helped me to grow at, at different, at, at, helped me to also grow. It has also helped me to grow. There are many times, you know, I could go in the flesh, but it, it never happened for so long. But just when I was going on mission, this particular thing happened. And I realized the enemy got me to get into the flesh. Of course, it did not bother me. I gave him that thing and he never showed up and I was more focused on the mission. We went, had a very successful mission and came back. But when I came back, again, I saw the work was not done. At that time, I could have been tempted to get into the flesh of all the pops or really give this guy a dose. The Lord just told me, get into the spirit. Speak the word. The word is spirit. It will bring God kind of life to pass. And that's exactly what happened. That's Amen. exactly what happened. And that's why, my dear sisters, it's so important for us first personally, you know, to take an audit of the words that we are speaking. Take an audit of, you know, whatever words we, we utter during the day. Sometimes, or I would say most of the time, you know, we, when we open our mouth, we will be speaking our circumstances. We'll be speaking, you know, what the weather is like. For example, somebody calls you. You're in Bangalore, say Sister Angelique. And I yes. call you in December, probably on the 15th of December. Hi, Sister Angelique. How are you? How's everything? How's the weather? Oh, it's so cold here. You know, the weather has become so cold now. It's becoming, I'm all in my cold. Now, do you think because you told me it's cold, it's going to get hot? No. Suppose right now, outside, it is, you know, really sweltering heat and sweating. I put on the AC right now. Suppose you ask me, how's the weather here? And I tell you, oh, it really, you know, it's very hot. I've got the AC and I'm, I'm sweating. Do you think because I say I'm sweating, the, 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 the Lord is going to send some snowfall here and the weather is going to get cold? No. But I've conditioned myself to speak what my circumstances say, what my, what my senses are saying. That's what Sister Moira was saying. We are so conditioned to speak what our senses are saying. And when we speak our senses, we are actually allowing the enemy to bring the manifestation of what we speak with our words and what our circumstances are saying to pass in our life. But if I choose not to speak my circumstances, but I open my mouth and speak the word of God, God can send his angels and start ministering to me and change my situation and circumstances. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, you know what? If you go to Matthew's gospel, let's quickly go to Matthew's gospel. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. I want to, sh I want to take you this to this verse. Look at what it says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Brother, you haven't shared the screen. I have not shared the screen? No, no. You are not able to see the screen? Ah, now I Sorry, my fault, brother. <laughs> praise God, praise God. Look at what it says in verse 36. Come, Sister uh, Angelique, please read that, please. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account, therefore, in the day of judgment. Wow. What is the Lord saying here? That means He's whatever. saying on the day of judgment, the day he returns, every idle word that we have spoken, we have to give an account of it. See, yes. this particular aspect, this particular aspect of verse 36 has never ever been there because most of the time we are saying when God comes, he will say to me, what are the good works did you do? Did you give food to the poor? Did you give clothes, you know, your secondhand clothes during Christmas time? You made some sweets and made some hamper and gave during Christmas time? Did you basically go to somebody in the hospital and just, you know, say, how are you? And just make a prayer, some one hour, Father, one Hail Mary, and do your obligation to see them? Or did you just, you know, when you went to work and nobody ever gives this aspect of be speaking idle words. Mm. Nobody ever gives this thought. But the word of God says, on the day of judgment, we will be giving an account of every idle word. What is the meaning of this word? Idle word. What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? Slander. No, brother? What is the meaning of idle word? What is the meaning of the word idle? 
You talk to any or something. Suppose you say this this person is idle. They are doing they nothing. You're wasting the time. Good, right? for good, for good for nothing. Doing nothing, wasting that time. That's idle. Basically, doing nothing. Basically, yes. doing, doing nothing. nothing. That's exactly what it means. Idle. That's it. So. If that word is idle word, that word is going to do nothing. nothing. The word that I speak is going to do nothing. It's not going to bring any profit in the kingdom of God. On the contrary, if I speak idle words, I'm going to give a license to the devil to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm. See, if you go to an Old Testament scripture uh, that is in... Uh, I think everyone knows that instead of putting that scripture. Does anyone remember Proverbs 18, 21? Yeah, life and death is in the power of your tongue. Life and death is in the power of our tongue and those who love it shall eat its fruit. Correct? Yes. That's an Old Testament scripture. It is according to the law. The law says when you open your mouth and speak life, you will bring life come to pass. You speak death, you will bring death come to pass in your life because of the words you are speaking. So according to the law, my words, whether I spoke life or spoke death, would now bring the manifestation of life or death based on the words that I spoke. Yes. Correct? Yes. When you come to the New Testament, when you come to the New Testament, you and I have the benefit of the Holy Spirit inside of us. We are not under the law anymore. That's right. So if we are having the Holy Spirit, if we are truly born again and if we are truly being saved, mm -hmm. then every word that I speak should be inspired by whom? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Not my senses, not what the word, not what the devil says or not what the lives of the enemies are but it should be inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the Lord is saying, on the day of judgment, every idle word that you spoke, you will give an account. What does it mean? You must remember that although life and death is in the power of my tongue and those who eat his fruit, shall, shall, they shall receive the food according to the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Galatians 3.13. Galatians 3.13. So, even though many times I may, even though having the Holy Spirit, I may speak words that are not going to bring profit, that are not going to be inspired by the Holy Spirit, I will, I can cancel those words because Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord because, you know, I, I, I've got Christ on the inside of me. But when I open my mouth and I speak negative words, what is going to happen? Is God going to bring judgment on me? Is God going to be upset with me? Yeah. No. See, my dear sisters and brothers, see, listen to this. In the Old Testament, now this is very good. In the Old Testament, my tongue decided everything, right? Yeah. If I opened my mouth and spoke what the word, because at that time, people did not have the Holy Spirit. So the law said, watch your tongue. Watch mm. your tongue. Because if you speak life, you will get life. You speak death, you will get death. So everything is dependent on whom? On yourself. Yeah. It's depending on your tongue. When you come to the new covenant, are you are you operating according to the law? No. no. You have been redeemed from the curse of the law. You have been redeemed from you know whatever that uh, that, that that situation is. That means in the new covenant, if when I have received Christ and I have the Holy Spirit. I am supposed to speak by default the word of God. Oh. I'm not finished yet. If I have got the Holy Spirit, is it my tongue? Is it I am going to be determined? Or is it the spirit of God who is going to inspire me and I simply need to speak his word? The spirit of God. The spirit of God should inspire me, right? Yeah. See, you know, if you don't understand this truth, you know, it, it, it looks so, it looks so identical that, you know, I'm going to tell you what is the difference here. In the Old Testament, it was my tongue. 
in the new testament it is the holy spirit inspired inside of me who is going to inspire me to open my mouth and speak his word but as i told you my own example did i open my mouth and i and i shouted at somebody can i do that even though i've got the holy spirit inside me can i go into the flesh yes yes 100% yes. yes. i can go into the flesh but when i go into the flesh at that time god is not the one who's going to destroy me or god is not the one who's going to bring any evil into my life because i'm not according to the law but when i open my mouth and speak anything contrary to the word who am i going to give an excess into my life satan i'm going to give an excess to satan but at the same time the spirit of god is on the inside of me so immediately when the enemy shows up because of the words that i spoke and i gave him excess the holy spirit in me will quickly allow me to repent renew my mind and kick that devil out kick those thoughts out and get back into faith and get back on the victory road amen Maybe says the see in the Old Testament you spoke that you spoke life you got life you spoke death you had to get death there was no second chance because there was no Holy Spirit now to inspire you to change you spoke those words you had to face those consequences you spoke the bad word you would face the consequences but in the New Covenant if you spoke negative words the Holy Spirit is inspired of you in spite of that I went into the flesh but praise God because Christ has overcome. the enemy he has given me the victory by the time the enemy shows up the holy spirit will convict me he will allow me to change my mind i can kick the devil out and get back into the track and start living the victorious life that's why that's why when you look at matthew chapter 12 verse 36 it says every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof who is the one who is going to speak idle words the person who is still not born again hmm. the person who doesn't have the holy spirit hmm. are you listening my dear sisters yes yeah. if you truly are born again and you have the holy spirit even if you spoke an idle word even if you spoke a word which was not according to the spirit the holy spirit will convict you you will renew your mind you change your words you will get back into track so that on the day of judgment you are not going to be even taken in it won't you won't be condemned because you would have already repented and got back into trap but for a person who is not born again because they are still under the law they are still you know trying to do that according to you know according to life is death in the power of the tongue this words that they have spoken is going to bring them judgment because they did not have christ to redeem them from the curse of the law amen so now that we belong to the new covenant now that we belong to christ now that we have the holy spirit we have got the helper on the inside of us so even many at times when we speak in the flesh or we speak idle words or we speak words that are not going to bring life what what kind of life the holy spirit in us is going to help us quickly to repent yes it doesn't mean that we are going to be 100% in our, in our in our flesh or in our mind or in our soul we are not going to reach that perfection even in this life there are times we will fail but praise god we have got a helper to quickly help us get out of that situation get back into the spirit and start operating in victory did you understand that yes brother yes so yes, look brother. at the advantage that you and i have now in the new covenant because of the holy spirit so when a person does not have the holy spirit is that person going to repeatedly fall down and get into the muck yes yes is that person just going to go into the pig sty come out of the pig sty again go into the pig sty it's just like living in the pig sty because the holy spirit in them is not there because the holy spirit is not speaking to them either because they have not been born again or if they did if they were born again and they did receive the holy spirit by now they have grieved the holy spirit they have quenched the holy spirit now they are just operating in the flesh it just like you know it just like you know you go back to the same mark all the time but if they are truly born again and we have the holy spirit in us the holy spirit in us is our helper is our comforter is our advocate is our guide 
He's our paraclete. He's there to comfort us. So he will come to our rescue, even though we spoke that negative word. Help us to renew our mind. Help us to repent and change our thinking in line with the word and get us back on that victory path to that to that place where we saw in, in, in John chapter uh, four, uh, uh, John chapter 6, verse 6, 63. Look at what it says in John chapter 6, verse 63. I want to take you to this last line. See what Jesus says. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. What sort of life? I'll, on this planet, right, everybody is not living. Everybody doesn't go to work. Doesn't everyone drive a car? They don't eat food. Are they all living? They're all living. They're not born again. They've not accepted Christ. Are they not having breakfast, lunch, dinner? Are they not going to sleep? Are they not dancing? Are they not singing? Are they not doing everything that other people are doing? Yes. But He's, what is this life? This is life in abundance, brother. This is the life of God. Life. The life of abundance. This is the life of victory. This is the life where you live to the fullest. Correct? So, when you and I have the Holy Spirit inside of us, what sort of life are we going to live? Zoe life. Abundant life. That's what you said correctly, Sister Angelique. We are not going to live a life of lack. We are not going to live a life of confusion. We are not going to live a life of, you know, uh, depression. We are going to live a life of victory, a life of clarity. Because the Holy Spirit is always clear. Because when the Holy Spirit speaks, He's always speaking clearly. There will be no disturbance in you. You know, when the Holy Spirit speaks, the first thing that you will experience is peace. That you know that the Holy Spirit has spoken. But when the Holy Spirit has not spoken, the enemy has spoken, or even the flesh has spoken, there will be all confusion on the inside. Yes. Are you with me? Yes, sir. yes. So the moment you get it from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will always bring peace of mind. And the Holy Spirit speaks, the first thing that you'll experience, no matter whether there's an earthquake around you, there, are, there, is, there is confusion around you, there is pandemic around you, people are going bonkers around you. But because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, you will experience peace. That is the presence of the Holy Spirit. So a person who is living in peace, others, most of the time, what do they say? When a person is put into a coffin, that's the time people will pray, no? On the second of the thing, eternal rest give unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls rest in peace. That's the only time they are in peace, when they are in the coffin and when they are buried. But when they are living on the earth, they are supposed to be in he says, come on, is it true that you will only experience peace when you go into the grave? No, 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 brother. No, we are supposed to experience that peace right now because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Therefore, when the Spirit of God is with us, even though there are times we open our mouth and speak our circumstances, I told you, you can speak what the doctor says. You can speak what the weather says. You can speak what you're feeling. You can speak what, you know, somebody said to you. Somebody called you a laddu. Somebody called you a pandu. You can be so sitting there and then put your thumb in your mouth and brood and feel so sad. Mm -hmm. But when you have the spirit of God in you, does it matter whether they called you a pandu or a laddu? No. no because you know very well who you are in Christ. Nobody can make you a laddu. Nobody can make you a pandu. Nobody can make you anything with their words. Because you have the spirit of God who's telling you, doesn't matter who said what to you, you are a child of God. You are the beloved of the Lord. And you don't have to be affected by what anybody is saying. But because the Holy Spirit is not speaking to me, I'm not spending time in the word. I'm not spending time studying his word. I have never let his word take root inside of me. Everybody's word, every circumstance, every situation is talking to me. There is no word, no spirit, and I'm living the most miserable life. Can it be possible? Yes. And that's why the Holy Spirit in us, even though times when we open our mouth and speak negative, he is the one who's our comforter. He's our guide. He's our helper. He's our paraclete. He's our advocate. He will quickly come to our rescue 
He will convict us of what we said. He said, repent, change your word, change your thinking, open your mouth and re repent of what you said. Get back on the track of victory and reach the finishing line and experiencing the abundant life, the God kind of life. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So without the Holy Spirit, can we live the Christian life, my brothers and sisters? No. no. Why did I say brothers? I think I'm saying to myself also. <laughs> Is it possible, my dear sisters? It's just Can we right. ever live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit? No, not at all. Not it at is all. impossible. Impossible. You can do religion very well. You go to church. You go you even open your Bible. You come to Bible class. You will give your testimony. You can even go and preach on the pulpit. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, first and foremost, you will never experience that peace. And without experiencing the peace of God, without experiencing the peace of Christ, you will never be able to operate, will never be able to function because you will never be able to give to anybody because you don't have it to give. But when you have the peace of Christ, you can give others the peace of Christ. And how do we receive the peace of Christ? By giving it to us. How do we receive the peace of Christ? Well, let's take this last scripture. Um, How do we receive the peace of Christ? Three. Isaiah huh? 26 3. Isaiah 26 3. Mm -hmm. Set your mind on God. What's it? I forget. What? Okay, read this 2 Peter 1 2. Okay. Let that peace be multiplied through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So grace and peace be multiplied, not just added, not just, you know, a token given. Multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied. How? To the knowledge of to God. the knowledge of God. And the Jesus. knowledge of God is the experiencing the love of God, experiencing the love of the Father through the Holy Spirit <laughs> and Jesus Christ our Lord. What is Jesus Christ our Lord? His word, his living word. So the word and the spirit together is going to bring multiplication of peace, going to bring the grace of God, and you're going to be on the victory line. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So what do we need to experience the peace of God? Do we need to pray for peace? No. How many times in the church we go, we say, we pray for peace in this world. We pray for peace in Ukraine. We pray for peace in London. We pray for peace in Australia. We pray for peace with the kangaroos. We are praying for peace. Do you get peace by praying for peace? No, sir. How do you get peace? Knowledge of the word. Knowledge of God. That is experiencing the love of God through the Holy Spirit. Remember Romans 5.5? 5, 5? The love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So unless you've experienced the love of God through the Holy Spirit, and you are rooted and grounded in the word that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the word of God became flesh. Jesus Christ is that word. So the word and the spirit together is going to bring a multiplication of peace and grace. And when you receive the grace and peace, can you offer that grace and peace to others? Yes. 100%. You can only give what you have. Yeah, Otherwise, okay. you'll be just a noisy gong. You'll try to give. Nobody will listen to you. Nobody's life will change. Nothing will happen because you yourself are not experiencing that peace. What can you give? That's why before we give, we should experience it first through that relationship with Jesus, through that commitment to, the, to his word. And as we begin to live that life of commitment and uh, you know, discipline with the Lord for that self. You know, Jesus, the Son of God, he was coming and doing his ministry. Remember, Jesus did his ministry for three and a half years. If you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there was not a day, there was not a day that Jesus never spent time with his heavenly Father. He would spend night, whole night in prayer. Whole night in prayer. Why did Jesus have to spend a whole night in prayer? He was doing preaching on the word of God. He could have been preaching whole 24 hours, yet he took time out to spend time with his heavenly father. Are we taking time out to spend time with the word of God? Are we spending time with our heavenly daddy? Are we spending time with the Holy Spirit? Have we disciplined ourselves that no matter what, 
family is there, brothers are there, husband is there, wife is there, children are there, grandchildren are there. Am I going to keep everybody aside because this is my time with the Lord? Have I disciplined myself to, to, and committed myself to that? Things of this life will occupy my time. Very difficult, brother. That's why Jesus spent time in the night, no? When everybody went to bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, it's, it's, I know it, it, it is difficult, brother, but we have to discipline ourselves, especially when we have children and grandchildren, something or the other. It is. See, my dear sister Angelique, one day we'll be standing before the Lord. Will you tell him, oh, Lord, you know what? I had grandchildren, I had my children, I had my husband, I had my wife. And he'll say, okay, I'll deal with them. What about you? Didn't I give you my word? Didn't I have to have a relationship with you? What sort of life did you live? No, I looked after all of them. Because end of the day, we have to bear fruit. And bear fruit that will last. We have to show something on that, on that slate or on our report card, how much fruit we bore. And we can only bear fruit only if we ourselves are having a relationship with him. Do you remember that scripture that I gave you? from John chapter 15, verse number 16. I think you all remember that scripture. What does it say here? You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask for of the father in my name he may give it to you see everybody wants this verse to come to pass in their life everybody wants this part that whatsoever you ask of the father in my name he may give it to you that everybody wants <laughs> but there is a condition for that you if understand? he chose you if he chose you and me, we did not choose him. He chose us and he gave us the Holy Spirit by ordaining us. For what purpose did he give us the Holy Spirit? That we should go and bring forth fruit, right? That we should go and bring forth fruit, right? Yes, brother. And what fruit? The fruit that should remain. What is the fruit that is going to remain forever? The souls that have been saved, the souls that are born again, the souls that have received the Holy Spirit, the souls that have a relationship with the Lord. Not the souls who went to church. Not the souls who did their rosaries every day. Those who never missed their Sunday Mass. Not those souls. Those who went out and brought others to the kingdom. Those who, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, were able to preach the gospel and bring. So that, 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 that soul that is coming into the kingdom of God because of you going out and preaching is now coming to whose account? To your account. Yeah. Because you brought that fruit. And when you go and stand before the Lord one day, he will ask you, which is the, how many fruit you brought? How many souls did you bring? No, Lord, I was busy with my grandchildren now. I was busy with my children. I was busy going to the beach. I was busy going to Honolulu. Will it be early? Will it be late? So important is when I understand that only my relationship with the Lord, I cannot compromise. I can be busy the whole day. I need to take out time out. I need to slip away from people. I need to spend that one-to-one -one time with my Lord and his word. And let his word talk to me. Let his word give me direction what he wants me to do. Let him give me the words what I need to speak to my family, to the brothers and sisters, to whoever I want to do. I need him to give me those words because of my relationship with him. Otherwise, I'll go and speak my own thing. I'll tell them stories. Who wants to hear stories? Who wants to hear whether it is hot or cold? Who wants to know whether the skies are blue? Come on, my sister and brother. Who wants to hear that? They want to hear the truth that is going to set them free. And if you have been chosen and ordained, then you will share the truth with people. They will hear the truth. That truth will set them free. They will come to the Lord. And when they come to the Lord, that's one soul 
or the, those many souls that are added to your account, that is the fruit that you're going to bear that should remain forever. Because the Lord will say, you went out, brought those souls by preaching the gospel. That soul is attributed to your account. Amen. Amen. So when are we going to start bringing souls? When are we going to start bearing fruit that will last? Are we going to say we try, try, apply, apply, no reply? Can we, can, you know, supposing you're looking for a job, you can keep on putting your CVs to uh, hundreds of companies, but no company is calling you. Is it possible? Possible. Maybe they call you also, but you don't get the job. You can go and preach as much as you want, but the souls are not coming to the kingdom. Do you think the problem is with the word? The problem is whether I have a relationship with him. I'm spending that time with him. I'm really growing in my relationship with him. I'm having that intimacy with him. The Holy Spirit is directing my life. And as the Holy Spirit is directing my life, and he gives me the instruction because of that relationship that I have with him. He's going to lead me to people and bring those souls and I will be able to bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And at the end of the day, it's all going to happen with my words. I'm going to speak the words, anointed words, not just my words. That's why I can't speak idle words. I think the more I have a relationship with the Lord, the more I spend time with him in his word, the more I'm meditating on his word. I'm not saying you sit with the Bible the whole day. But you're meditating on the word. You're constantly in communion with the Lord. You're constantly in communion with the Holy Spirit. You're not going to let your flesh dominate you. You're going to let the spirit dominate you. As you let the spirit of God dominate your life, control your life, lead you, it's going to show you the people. He's going to show you the, your candidates. He's going to show you your customers. Oh, I love that. He's going to give you your customers who are going to be your fruit, who are going to be added to your account so that you can have something to show on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 So can we all... Can somebody say a closing prayer before we end today? It's God. Who would like to do a closing prayer? Oh, Sister Joyce is back. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I missed Praise most God. of it, brother. Praise Thank God. you. Praise God. Can we God. have a closing prayer? Joyce, you want to do the closing prayer? Uh. I wasn't here for so long and I'm not <laughs> ready. Okay, you say, Anjali, today. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time of fellowship. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we come committed every week to hear your word and, your, and the truth that sets us free. Thank you, Lord, that we are taught to go out and bear fruit and be fruit, fruitful people, Lord Jesus knowing your word and sharing your word, the knowledge of your word with others. Even though it may be difficult, even though we may not have much time during the day, but let us be disciplined, Lord, to give you that time to delight in your word, to delight in you, so yes, that Lord. we can bear fruit to others. Yes, Thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, that you have given us 24 hours in the day, which sometimes you may think it's not enough, but yet, Lord Jesus, those 24 hours will be stretched when we take time out to delight in you. Yes. And we thank you and we praise you, Lord Jesus, that every every week that we come, we, le we learn more and more of your word and the revelation of your word, Lord Jesus, that gives us life and life in abundance because your word is spirit and life. We thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Sister. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Jesus.